Well, I'm personally excited because today we cover the country where one quarter of my heritage comes from, Italia. There is no such thing as a single type of Italian. People from Sicilia would almost need a translator to understand people in Veneto. Napoli looks incredibly different from Milano. And people from South Tyrol are like, uh, warum sind wir hier? But for what it's worth, Italy has definitely made its mark. And today we jump in. Va bene? Cominciamo! It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs, derived from my last name Barbato, which translates to beard man. I'm serious. Hey, laugh all you want, but that just means I might be related to Scipio Africanus Barbatus, the guy who defeated Hannibal in, I think, the Second Punic War. So ha! I got victory in my blood! Nah, I'm probably related to some ancient guy that sold barley or something. Barley that was eaten by Scipio Africanus Barbatus who defeated Hannibal! So yes, I still got it! I basically defeated Hannibal! But where was Hannibal defeated? Let's find out in... In Italy, it's all about tutte le strada portano a Roma. First of all, Italy is that boot-shaped country kicking two deflated soccer balls located in Europe at the heart of the Mediterranean Sea, bordered by France, Switzerland, Austria, and Slovenia in the north, and two micro-states are completely engulfed within Italy, the Vatican City and San Marino, which is like the easiest country to sneak into, like seriously, there's a Japanese restaurant and a sports store next to the entrance with no guards. With two, this makes Italy the country with the most other countries enclaved inside of it. South Africa was so close with Swaziland, but then Mozambique had to exist, Oh, and there was that time Reggio tried to secede from Italy back in the 70s, which almost made it three, but that's a whole other story, just look it up. The country is divided into 20 regions with the capital Rome. Five of the regions have special autonomous status. Sardinia, Sicily, Trentino Alto, or Sud Tirol, otherwise known as South Tyrol, Yaosta Valley, and Friuli Venezia Giulia. The country's largest cities are, of course, the capital Rome, then Milano, and Napoli, with the busiest airports being Rome, Leonardo da Vinci, Fiumicino, Milan, Malpensa, and Bergamo Caravaggio International Airports. In addition to the two largest islands, Islands, Sicilia and Sardinia. The country owns over 350 islands off its coast. Finally, there's that land dispute with France over the summit of Mont Blanc and a small little two and a half kilometer long enclave in Switzerland called Campione d'Italia, which is kind of like a special spot exempt from the EU value added tax zone, which makes sense because it has Italy's largest casino. Phew, Italy, you got some complication monadics going on. The funny thing is modern Italy once even tried to take a stab at colonialism in the late 19th and early 20th centuries with areas stretching from the Balkans, Northern Africa and the Horn of Africa including a short kind of occupation of Ethiopia, but it didn't last that long because the Ethiopians fought back relentlessly. And to this day, it's back to the boot with two deflated soccer balls. Guys, I'll convert metric for you, but I call it soccer, okay? The Canadians, South Africans, Australians, Kiwis, Japanese, and parts of Ireland and the Philippines and Papua New Guinea all agree with me, okay? It's not just Americans that call it soccer. Voy dire calcio. Okay, good luck with that. Now this is the part where I typically go down the list of notable sites found in Italy. However, the problem is there are literally too many. I'm not even joking. Italy has more heritage sites than any other country in the world at over 50. We all know about the big guys, so I'm not gonna mention most of them. Instead, through my extensive research, here are some obscure, lesser known, yet equally fascinating spots worthy of noting. The dining table of Bilalante, the Bomarzo Horror Garden, Ai Piapi, a theme park made of rides that require your own kinetic energy to operate, the necropolis of Banditaccia, La Scarzuola Monastery, the free wine fountain, of Camino di San Tommaso. Let that just sink in. Free wine. The relics of Jesus' apostle St. Thomas, the geothermal waterfalls of Tuscany, the sunken city of Baia, the cliffside town of Santa Gata de Gotti, the sulfuric fields of Puzzuoli, that fortress built by that crazy guy, the Urbania mummies, the Custino sword in the stone, the nine layer maze of Villa Pisani, the road of 52 tunnels, the pyramid zone of Castello, the Encantado heads carved by a crazy guy. There's a lot of monuments made by crazy people. And of course, way too many castles, fortresses, churches, monasteries, museums, and ancient sites to list, but you get the point. Now let's blast off like a volcano, which Italy has, into the next segment, shall we? Now, we all know that Italy is insanely beautiful in so many areas, everybody wants to see it. I mean, even Mr. and Mrs. Information went there on their honeymoon, you're welcome. First of all, Italy's beauty comes at a cost. The country lies just above the convergence of the Eurasian and African plates in the Mediterranean, but also on the Apennine or Apennini thrust fault line that smashes into Western Europe, and that's how the Alps were formed. Basically, the Alps make like a barrier in the north with the Apennini mountains running along the entire length of the country as like a scoopy spine until it technically ends in the island of Sicilia. Because Italy's mountains are volcanic fault formed, it has created some amazing natural formations like the Dolomiti Rocks, the steep sides of Lake Garda, the largest lake in Italy, the Umbria Valleys, the undulating hills of Tuscany. This also means that Italy is kind of split in half east and west with a major lush basin locked in the north that receives an abundance of fresh snow cap water melt, creating rivers like the longest one, the Po River, located in the aptly named Po Valley. This valley extends about 650 kilometers, 400 miles, all the way from the French border to the Adriatic Sea, which ends at a little city you may have heard of called Venezia, or Venice. This 
also means that Italy is a volcanic country. To this day, there are about 30 volcanoes, three known active ones, Etna, Stromboli, and the famous Vesuvius, making it the most densely populated and potentially deadly volcanic region in the world. It's like, yeah, I know I could die, but oh man, the pizza here is totally worth it. Speaking of which, about a quarter of the land is arable, allowing them to grow lots of food. I'm sure you are fully aware of the typical Italian dishes. However, each region kind of specializes in a certain cuisine. In the north, you have foods like polenta, gnocchi, white truffles, Liguria has great pesto, and in South Tyrol, you have Germanic inspired dishes like noodle dumplings and strudel. In the center, you have things like lasagna, boar, artichokes, lamb, steak, gelato, pasta, which comes in over 600 variations. Indisputably, the best wine is in Toscana. The south is the pizza kingdom, and Napoli is like the capital. Sardinia is known for those cool cheese fritter dumpling things. Italy enjoys a mild Mediterranean climate, only snowing in the north and high altitude areas. Now, despite deforestation and pollution being an issue and Venice flooding almost every year now, Italy is actually the most fauna biodiverse country in Europe with over 57,000 species recorded. That's about a third of all European fauna. About 4,800 are endemic like the Sardinian red deer, the Italian cave salamander, the alpine marmot, Marsican brown bear, the crested porcupine, and the national animal, the Italian wolf. Otherwise, as the eighth largest nominal GDP in the world and the eighth largest exporter, Italy's economy is heavily driven off of industry and production, specifically in luxury items. Major world-renowned companies like Fiat, Lamborghini, Ferrari, Maserati, Ducati, Pirelli, Armani, and Versace, Dolce & Gabbana, Gucci, and Prada are key players in keeping Italy afloat. In many ways, there's kind of like a sense of class that's almost expected with being Italian. No matter how intense things may get, you don't just waltz in here with your shoes unpolished. Which brings us to... Now, being Italian, we've all heard the stereotypes. Loud, passionate, hand gesturing, bad driving, temperate, sensitive, clean freaks that never follow the rules. And as offensive as that may sound, it's kind of based off of truth, but with good reasoning. We'll explain in a bit, but first, Italy has about 61 million people in their country and they are the third most populous country in the EU after the whole Brexit thing and the sixth in all of Europe. Getting the exact ethnic makeup in Italy is a little difficult because Italy is a lot more diverse than you would think. About 92% of the country identifies as ethnically Italian, although keep in mind that that's kind of a broad term considering how many different types and shades of Italian there are, but nonetheless Italian. Whereas about 2% are Romanian, 1% North African, and the rest of the country is made up of a slew of global people groups, everything from Albanian, Eritrean, Chinese, and Ukrainians. They also use the Euro, the Type C plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now when it comes to Italy, it basically comes down to two things, North and South. Southerners like to jokingly call Northerners polentoni, based off of the polenta that they eat, and likewise Northerners like to call Southerners terroni, which I actually don't even know where that's based off of. My research kind of ended there. If you know, type it in the comments. Basically, the North is like where all the financial districts and stereotypical uppity preppy people live, whereas the South is kind of like where the rustic tough people live. Plus, you know, the South is kind of like mafia territory. Oh, come on. Everybody already knows it. You have the Costa Nostra in Sicilia, Ndrangheta in Calabria, the Camorra in Campania, and the Sacra Corona Unita in Puglia. Don't worry, though. If you visit as a tourist, you should be fine. It's not much of a big deal anymore. I mean, unless you start a mob war by yourself, nothing will pretty much happen. So no starting mob wars. Okay, got it. Aww. There are so many different dialects and subgroups like South Tyrol mostly speaks German, kind of. Aosta Valley speaks French, sort of. No, but seriously, the standard Italian language spoken and taught today is based off of the Florentine version of Tuscan Italian, which is kind of like an intermediate between the Gallo-Romance dialects of the North and the Italo-Dalmatian dialects of the South. This all happened because prior to Italian unification, the country was split between multiple kingdoms and states, each with their own semi-Latin based language, which made communication a little bit of a challenge. For example, in standard Italian, you might say, di dove sei? But in Sicilian, the unici in standard ciao come stai tutto bene but in venetian u come vale tutto bene in standard forchetta in lombard Peru? This is one of the reasons why Italians attribute the creation of the famous Italian hand gestures. People would travel barely 50 kilometers and find themselves in a hard to understand dialect region. So essentially they had to kind of get their point across fast. There's a saying that Italians have l'arte di arrangiarsi or the art of arranging, which translates to something like the art of figuring it out on your own. When words fail, hands succeed. There's no specific code, but some generally accepted gestures include things like mi dispiace, sei pazzo, bere vino. Bellissimo, delicioso, stai attento, ma cosa dici? Perfecto. And vai la corona. Speaking of societal background, we don't have enough time to explain the entire history of Italy, but in the quickest way I can put it, Etruscans, Romans, Christianity, ridiculous amount of separate kingdoms and feudal states, barbarian invasions, Byzantines, medieval kingdoms, Renaissance, Napoleonic invasions, Sardinia, Piedmont unifies Italy after three independence wars, or four depending on who you ask, mass emigration to other countries begins, World War One, fascism, World War Two, resistance movement, after war, economic boom, 2008 crisis, which brings us here today. Basically the epicenter of ancient Rome 
Rome was here, hence the capital being named Rome. Speaking of which, even though the Italian monarchy ended long ago, there are still two descendants that still exist today acting as heir apparent. The Catholic Church has played a major role in Italy even to this day. Almost every single town has at least one church. About 88% of the country identifies as Catholic, however only a third say they are active practitioners on a weekly basis. And one of the reasons why Italy has made such a universal mark is partially because between the late 1800s and early 1900s, Italy experienced a mass emigration in which over the years around 25 million left. This is considered the largest mass migration of contemporary times. Suddenly you have new communities of Italians all over the world in places like Brazil, Argentina, the US, UK, and France. Oh wow, this video is running long and I didn't even get to talk about the deadly Calcio Florentino Game of Florence or, or the Santa Maria delle Grazie Snake Festival, Opera Pupi in Sicilia. So many cool things, but we gotta move on. Some notable people either from Italy or of Italian descent might include people like Cicero, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Dante Alighieri, Niccolo Machiavelli, Donatello, Caravaggio, Galileo Galilei, Christopher Columbus, Amerigo Vespucci, Marco Polo, Niccolo Paganini, Giuseppe Garibaldi, Luigi Pirandello, Federico Fellini, Luciano Pavorati, Andrea Bocelli, Umberto Eco, Sofia Loren, Valentino Rossi, Roberto Baggio, Monica Bellucci, Silvio Berlusconi, Enzo Ferrari, Donatello Versace, Giorgio Armani. Mainstream American artists of Italian descent might include so many stars like Frank Sinatra, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Sylvester Stallone, Leonardo DiCaprio, Steve Buscemi, Quentin Tarantino, Ariana Grande, Lady Gaga, even Nicolas Cage has some Italian in him. Again, Italian people have such a strong and solid history and culture, but what does the rest of the world think of them? And what do they think about their neighbors? Well, that brings us to... Italy is a really great guy once you get to know him, but that's just the thing. You gotta warm up to them, al dente style. First of all, France is like their best frenemy. They smile at each other, but secretly they're always trying to compete with who has the highest class and elegance. They also hate the fact that France has Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Nonetheless, with historical bumps like World War II, they still cooperate well today. Argentina is like their adoptive daughter that they sent to Spanish boarding school, but they still fiercely refuse to make friends with their neighbors. As mentioned in the Argentina video, the majority and largest demographic of people in Argentina have Italian heritage, and they love doing business with Italy. Malta and San Marino are kind of seen as like their little sons that they love helping out, even though San Marino is like way older than the modern unified state of Italy, but that's besides the point. They think it's cute how Malta speaks their own language that kind of incorporates Italian words, and San Marino is like their good luck charm who more or less has always been peaceful and drama free since the 4th century. Of course the Vatican is like a unique player that they pay their respects to, but will not give the opportunity to raise another empire, and hence they keep them confined to the basilica grounds. In terms of their best friends though, literally every Italian I talk to has said the exact same two countries, Greece and Spain. As mentioned in the Greece episode, they live by the una faza una razza rule, one face, one race. These three countries make the trinity of the Mediterranean. You know it's gonna be a good time when you put a Spaniard and a Greek and Italian in the same room. Nothing can stop them. They own the seas, they trade, they share stories, they drink together, they marry the crap out of each other. In conclusion, for centuries, Italy has been a beacon of art, literature, fashion, architecture, history, religion, cuisine, traditions, and landmarks to the rest of the world. And personally, I'm proud to be a part of it. But most importantly, I'm proud that that my barley selling bearded ancestors basically killed Hannibal and saved the universe. And I get to take like at least 40% of their credit. So basically, I saved the universe. Totally true, not made up, 100% fact. Stay tuned, the Ivory Coast is coming up next.